So we head over to file and just go and open maybe the whole project. Let's go and start with the whole project. It's one of those things we just have to be patient and and see what's what. Which is a quality I greatly admire about anyone who deals with 3D, especially in 3D animation, the amount of calm and chilled outness and patience that you need to bring for any of these projects is just unbelievable. <laughs> Sometimes I lack said patience. There we go, that's not bad, that's not bad. Marvelous Designer is of course different in regards to 3D shortcuts than Das Studio or Blender. All the 3D applications are. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my 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 special background picture on here if I can remember how to do this. Format 3D background. I like having a darker background here. A closed default background is a kind of a light. So this is a so-called a 1C that Darja has made. And she would like to animate this. So this is this is what she wants to do. And with that, there's a little bit of a hole here. We'll, we'll have a look at that. It's not really about the about the outfit as such, even though it looks very nice. I do like it. It's very it's very fitted. Nice job, Darja. Very nice. So it uh, it is about how can she animate this in Das Studio without having to redrape the cloth in Marvelous Designer. So that's one of the things that, uh, although it is very powerful, when you're dealing with an animation, you may not uh, need all that overhead, especially if it's tight fitting clothing like this. You might be better off having it rigged inside of Das Studio and then turn it into conforming clothing. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Currently, I don't really know what this was based on. She did tell me i'm kind of hoping it's the genesis 8 uh, basic female it looks like it has uh, draped itself out so that's cool i will go and export all the patterns here i can either select them or just head over to file export obj selected that's kind of my favorite way of working just to make sure i get the selected pieces out it kind of helps if you have a top and uh, matching trousers and you want to export one after the other rather than both of them together so obj will do the same thing we just have an extra selection dialog with pre-selected magic here if i do that and i'll go and put that into project Darja. i'll make another little folder here and I'll call that one OBJs, just so that I know where my OBJs are going. So I'll call this one 1C. Um, 1C static, maybe. I'll call that 1C static. Doesn't really matter. As long as I can remember what it is. And of course, first thing I've already forgotten, I need to UV map this thing, don't I? I, have to <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Let's do that. <laughs> it does it. Yes, I thought, I thought so too, Chris. I thought so too. Let's cancel that operation, quickly do the UV mapping. I don't think that's been done. So let's do that. Patterns, all of them uh, just go over here to UV editor. I believe Clo does have that, right? I think Clo has that UV editor. And we need to take care of making sure these things are all in the zero to one space and they don't overlap. So we can go and um, fit, to, fit UV to zero to one, all of them, and it does that. And we say, okay, it just, it kind of does it, but it also doesn't do it very well. <laughs> I must say some of these pieces overlap and that's not good. You don't really want that in, in UVs. I don't know if, there, if there's more of them that overlap. No, that is it. These look all pretty unoverlapped to me. So there's, there's better ways of, of, uh, of doing this with other programs, but you know, just as long as they're not overlapping, you just, drag them all out from one another and then you can just go and make them make just make them fit better really you can't even rotate them i suppose these two i don't want to spend too much time on this but you know just make it a little better you know that's what we like to do us semi-professionals as i like to call us uh can we let me just go make that a little bit, a little bit larger, like so. Hey, that's great. These things here, we can, we can probably also just turn them. And then I'll go and try to make them kind of a similar size and see if we can just fit those. So they are better um, 
packing algorithms in, in, uh, in Blender, for example. Yeah, um, yeah, um, you know. And yeah, maybe these two, if I put them on kind of on top of one another, and then just scale these two down a little bit, I'm thinking, like, you know, like so. Maybe we can squeeze them in here. And do the same with these guys. So maybe that can go here, that can go here. And then these guys here, maybe. That is kind of in the in the square there, isn't it? I think so, yes, I think there's a hole under the arm. I, I noticed that as well. And I'm not sure why that is. It's, it's Dodger's outfit. I'm gonna just leave it as it is. I don't really know where that, what that, uh, what that is. Yes, well spotted. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. This is now not UV mapped as such. It will, it will become UV mapped as soon as I export it, but they just need to be in this in one space so that um, you know the UVs are at least sorted. So now let's go back into our regular album. That one here. Select everything everything we want to export and head over to export obj selected and i will call this 1z static kind of misleading because in a minute it won't be static anymore <laughs> so we'll want to export this as a single object we want to weld everything we want to export this as thin and we want to export this with unified uv coordinates that's fine scale should be centimeters 100 percent das Nothing should be inverted or exverted. Right, let's go and do this thing. Yes, I think this was more like a demo project and for her it was more important to understand how to how do we rig this in Das Studio or how do we get it um, how do we get it turned into conforming clothing? I'm gonna have a look if this was indeed fits indeed the um, the Genesis 8 figure. Let's just hope it does. Uh, that was Project Darja, OBJ's 1C Static. I've, I've also misspelled 1C. I've said on C. It should have been 1C. Dang, brother, that's cold. There it is. Perfect. And to make it less burned out, I'll go and create myself a filament draw options node. It's also, you can also try and mess with the tone mapper but I like to just drop down the environment intensity scale from its default 15,000 to more like 3,000. And as a result, we see that the that the garment looks much better. So if I go and put that to the default, everything's blown out. I don't see any detail. But if I go and put that to 3,000, that's just, you know, much, much better. Hmm. Okay, how much is it a month, Rod? That'd be kind of interesting to, to know. I mean, you know, we, we all like to pick up tips. Well, well done for them to have that turned into a business. That is also, that's very cool. Let's go and add my friend, the Genesis figure to it. Make sure you deselect that, deselect filter by content. Otherwise, most of these things won't show up here. Or you just deselect things in the scene. That's also possible. Either will work fine. Figures. Um, was it maybe on products? Yeah, there we go. That's better. Genesis 8 figures. I'm going to use the regular Genesis 8 female dev load. And once we've done it, we're also going to deal with maps. I mean, there's, there's, there's a material on it. And I just thought maybe I'll go through how to do the maps. Look at that. It is in the correct position. I like it a lot. Oh, zero. Rod, that is that is the correct price for my budget. <laughs> is I like it. It's not quite a bodysuit. It's just a very tight fitting, very very fitted thing. So that's that's kind of cool. So the big issue is, of course, if I now go ahead and in my Genesis figure, if I go into the Actors tab, and I will go and find something like a People Morph. 
anything like Victoria 8, for example, if I dial her in, then the figure morphs, the figure shapes, but the, the clothing doesn't, and that's uncool. That's a big problem on regular people, but if I have something like a plus size person, and this isn't even plus size, this is just, you know, it's not even voluptuous, I'd say. Um, anything that is, you know, that is more extreme, like especially stylized characters, the thing just doesn't move. And there is a thing that we can do here, and that is the so-called transfer utility. That's the thing that Dowdy wants to know about. So it's accessible via several places. I like using this here on the scene tab, these, this hamburger icon here. If you click on that, there's a thing under assets, there's the whoops there's the transfer utility here and it's kind of a script that runs and you can use that it's also accessible over here i believe i think under create uh where was it so no it's not it's under edit object transfer utility that's the same thing so it's just just you know there's also an icon that you can put on the toolbar but I haven't done that. I'd, I'd like to use, um, you know, I like to use different things at different times. <laughs> so if we go and grab that, it comes up with this exciting dialog box that we can expand as well. In fact, let's do that. And the show options becomes a little bit bigger, even scarier than before. And it asks us to pick a source and a destination or source and a target for what we want to what we want to transfer here. So remember this thing transfers whatever is rigged inside the Genesis figure as well as weight mapped in the Genesis figure and it transfers that to the it creates new rigging in a target figure that will then also have that um, that type of rigging in there. And we're going to go and select Genesis as a source. That's this one here, Genesis 8 female. The item has to be in your scene, so make sure it's loaded here, but also make sure it's not in a morph position. It has to be in the A position and, you know, with, with nothing else there. Then on the target front here, let's go ahead and pick the Z static. We're going to rename that in a minute because that's just terrible spelling. And then we're kind of ready to roll. There's, there's some options here that we'll look at in a moment. One thing do you want to have a do you want to have a look at is um, in the scene tab have a look at the oh humble tabletop bundle was just purchased for 15 canadian dollars thank you so much to whoever did that that is awesome thank you for going via my affiliate link i appreciate that that gives me a little cut and that of course pays the bills in this harsh winter so thank you Uh, no, uh, Kelly, it will only work on on things that are not a figure. Do you know, it's funny you should say that because I'm I'm just coming to to the fact how you can determine that. So let's let's first of all let's go and drag things that we don't need into a group like the filament draw options and the and the uh, all these environment options here. We don't really need those. So I'm going to go and in fact get rid of these. And the filament draw options node, I didn't want you to get confused by that. So we have one static object, which is this, and that has kind of a cube icon in the front. And that means it's a not, not a rigged figure. It means it's a static OBJ. It's not, uh, it's, got, it's a prop technically. And it is, it's not in a hierarchy and all that. Whereas the Genesis figure here, that has kind of these three cubes stacked on top of one another. It looks a bit like a Cuba type game. And it also has a disclosure triangle. So that that is now, these are not exactly the bones, they're the nodes that correspond to the bones, I guess. But the top node here, that has these three little cubes and our onesie static currently, well maybe I can actually rename that because that, that spelling really weirds me out. One Z and it's also not static in a moment so let's just call it one z <laughs> there so it has this little single cube there so it's going to change in a moment when we run this transfer utility let's go do that assets transfer utility and once again show them options here and there is uh, all kinds of things that you can oh mr jeremy thank you so much for subscribing i very much appreciate that <laughs> very welcome to the stream my friend Oh, it was Mr. Tykin. Super awesome. I'm glad you did that. I really appreciate that, my, my friend. Very, very nice. Very nice. So let's go ahead and pick our source figure, which is Genesis. 
pick our target thing, which is now the onesie. And then we have the projection template here. You can leave that on none. It really doesn't matter. There's a few things that it suggests of what this could be. The, the difference really is between none and any of these specific things is that the specific things will leave out certain items to rig. So in my onesie, I have more or less everything. So I'm just gonna leave it on none. I could also say full body. None kind of works that out. If you had a dress and you had a knee length dress, the transfer utility would not include the rigging for anything that goes up from the hip. So you don't have the head because it's not part of your figure. You don't have the collarbone and all that. That's just not part of it. So that's how that works. Hair, same thing. If you go short hair, then it will only have the head area rigged and nothing going, whoops, going down uh, from there. So you don't have the legs and the arms because you know it just keeps it a bit more compartmentalized. I'm going to leave it on none. That's Cool. There's a few other things here. At the very bottom, you can just about see that. Fit to source figure. You can do that, you don't have to. You can do that later. It's just where the note will end up. Parent to source figure. I'm gonna not do that. Uh, fitting, we're gonna do. But parenting, I don't wanna do. And we can also add a smoothing modifier. I'll do that and hit OK. Let the thing do its thing. And it looks like nothing's happened which is kind of good because it's nothing bad has happened. You know, nothing's happened, but also nothing bad has happened. So, but what we can see now is that at the top here, my onesie now looks exactly like the Genesis figure here. If you don't see that, it's probably because it's now uh, parented and that will be, that would look like, uh, that would look like this. Then it appears to be kind of underneath the, the Genesis node here. And I didn't want that because it's, you know, it's nice for us to just see that. And you can just go drag that in if you like. I'm going to, I prefer to just leave it like that. So this now also has these three blocks. And if you open the disclosure triangle up here, it has the full rigging of the figure. And that's kind of, that's, that's, that's already, that's most of the work done, which is kind of cool because now if I go and select my Genesis figure and head over to another one of them, uh, actor morphs here under people and if i go and dial in the olympia morph for example the figure moves but also the clothing moves and that is i suppose i believe what Daja wants so you can you can dial any figure in and the clothing moves with the figure now and it's kind of magic and it works because the the DAS Studio is going to try and attempt to recreate the same morph that's in the Genesis figure on the clothing. It's kind of magic. It's really good. It doesn't always work. So sometimes you see, like this is a good example here. She's got kind of a large chest here. Who is that? Jolina. And uh, for, for quick animations, this is perfectly fine. But if you wanted for this to look a little bit more natural, you would go and create a special uh, morph that that kind of that replaces this morph. So the Jolina morph is a morph that is installed on my on my Genesis figure, but really not on the clothing. So the clothing, or that studio tries to make that follow. It'll say, "Hey, that morph doesn't exist," but I'm going to try my best to follow the shape of the Genesis character. And you know, this is what it's doing. It's kind of clinging on. It's kind of hugging on there. In reality, you probably have the cloth kind of um, draped down here. You probably wouldn't have it as tight and you know you would have um, you, you maybe have a different shape there so you can go ahead and uh, redrape just for this character in Marvelous Designer and then import that morph and then add that as a special morph in your clothing so that if this particular morph gets dialed in on the figure then Dash Studio knows ah okay I have a morph for that in my clothing and I can do something else now instead of trying to guess what this is supposed to look like I can make I can use the morph that you've given me comma human and then it might look a bit better it looks like Snoopy's nose <laughs> okay very good <laughs> What about the dress or skirt where you need two or three sets of bones instead of just the one set from the legs? Oh, you have to set those up um, manually. So that is not something that the transfer utility can help you. I'm assuming, Kelly, you're talking about the adjustment morphs. Is that what you mean? Sometimes on skirts, we see we see things like, um, you know, often it's like four little dots, one here, one there, and two on the sides. And if you strike a pose, let's see if I can find a pose here. Uh, pose and do we have something like uh, like like this and the skirt would now kind of go through her leg here 
how would you deal with that um, if it's not a deforce clothing item you can uh, you can add morphs in blender to the skirt that will then go either out flare out manually and you can hook that up to little um, little controls they're also 3d objects that are part of your thing um, yeah that's that's how you do that or you'd give adjustment morphs that would usually be then uh, here under uh, under the parameters tab and only on your clothing and then you have something like um, you know a particular morph thing somewhere we don't actually have it because we don't have any morphs but there, that's where there would be and uh, yeah that's that's how you could do that hmm you could do that as well. Um, that is something I'm currently looking into. I know what you mean. You, you, you'd say, uh, leave the rigging from the Genesis figure, like the transferred rigging, but now add your own, right? Is that what you mean? Because that is also possible. You can do that. Uh, that's trickier. That works it just if you wanted to look into that, it uh, works with the figure setup. That's a kind of a tab here that you have to have open for that. And you'd go and import a geometry in here you browse to that, then you drag that onto this thing here. That is something I'm currently learning, and that will then uh, give you the bone hierarchy. So that's that rigging is, is a bit of a tricky thing to get done in Das Studio because you have to the you have to kind of derive the bones from the face groups or from the from the um, it's not selection sets they are uh, poly groups. Blender calls them. I think Das Studio calls them face groups i think i think let's have a look is that is that something we can have a look in here uh under tool settings yes there we go face groups that's that's what das studio calls them if you if you set those up on your uh on your obj either with Blender or with Das Studio, you can see what's, uh, what is being selected here. That's a face group and then abdomen uh, upper is that, that's the chest, chest upper and so forth, left forearm. These are all the, the face groups. If you uh, set those up and then save, that's on the static OBJ, on the unrigged OBJ. If you, if you set those up and then save the OBJ, then you head over to figure setup and then you import, I don't know why they do it, so this is complicated, but then you have to add geometry here and essentially go and import your um, thing uh, and then you can set, then you can create bones from that. I might actually show you that. My, my learning project, I can go and go ahead and do that. This is just a cylinder here. And the cylinder now has two face groups, top and bottom, whoops, top and bottom. And this is just an OBJ. This is just a, a primitive cylinder that I've made in Das Studio. When you go and drag that over to the geometry here, it's really, really complicated. Then you have kind of the beginnings of bones here with the selection groups. And if you now drag the top onto the bottom, then you have your bone hierarchy. So that's how you create the hierarchy. Then you can fiddle with, mate, with weight maps. You hit create at the very bottom here once you're done just as a, you know, to wrap this up. And then you can leave the figure set up and you see that, whoops, you see that my cylinder now also has the, the kind of bone hierarchy symbol here. You know, and we have the top node and we have top and bottom. And those are then the bones. And you go ahead and weight map that. And it's a little complicated, but that is how Das Studio works with that. <laughs> Yeah, materials, the good thing, it's a good question, actually, um, Kelly, because materials you can deal with separately. Um, for example, if we go, if we, if we stick with the cylinder for a second, you can, you can do that literally inside Das Studio. So if you have, um, like this, this, no, actually, let's, let's go, let's go start with a different cylinder. Let me go and make a, make a different thing, a different thing here. Cylinder, 12 by 12, that's a, that's that cylinder, isn't it? And we go and bring that over here, cylinder. So this is something I've just created here with the, with the create menu. If you head over to the wire texture shaded, you can see the, uh, the polygons here. 
And if I go and if I select that, and if I head over to the surfaces tab, I can see that my cylinder or any primitive that Das Studio creates for you has one material zone, which is called default. And uh, this is true for any object that, that you bring in. Usually when it's UV mapped, it either has one material zone or it has way too many, like Marvel's designer um, things come out with often a lot of material zones. And if you want to change those, you can do that right inside that studio. It's kind of cool. You can go and use the geometry editing tool again, head over to tool settings, and then you see these, these surfaces here. And so you can do that independent of the rigging. If I wanted to go ahead and have a different group at the top here, I can go and just paint my selection on there. And it's a little bit clunky because, you know, it's not quite, it's not quite Blender, but you can set up, you can select something here on the cylinder and then under the surfaces, you can go and right click, create surface from selected, and then you give it a snazzy name. And you can say this is the dress's rim. Oh, the, the, yeah, let's just call it the, the, let's call it the dress rim. You can do that. And then these faces that I've selected will be removed from the default. And you now have two material groups. And they now correspond to whatever's happening on the surfaces tab. So if I go over here, I now see I have default and I also have the rim. So you now, so what I'm saying is you can do that independently from the uh, from the from the rigging. So rigging and material setup is, is two different things. It's um yeah uh, yes, it's it's it works independently from another rigging and and material setup is, is two different things. So you can do them. You you have to set them up independently from another anyway. And that studio kind of helps with that. But I suppose things like Blender just have better selection tools. So if I wanted to uh, select this whole row from down here to up here, there are rudimentary selection options that that studio offers like uh, invert, grow, shrink, select connected. It doesn't work really. <laughs> so it's, you, you're probably better off doing that in a different program, but the principles are the same, which is, which is kind of cool. Surfaces are uh, different than there's the, um, the face groups. I think Blender calls poly groups. And then you also have selection sets. That's another thing. If you wanted to make things visible, invisible, you can use selection sets for that. They're just kind of a, a different way of grouping things together and they work independently from, from one another. Alrighty, so um, we're kind of, we're almost done with, with Darja's thing. This poor Darja's totally confused at this point. <laughs> But I suppose, yeah, that's that's really that's that's really all I wanted to show about the uh, about the the way you can do the the transfer utility. One other thing I think we're going to just go over quickly is since I did the UV mapping, let's go and bring the material in for this as well, and then we can we can have a look at how we can fix the material uh, on the onesie. Let's do that. Uh, Go away. I like my toolbar to, you know, disappear. <laughs> so um, the onesie, if I select the onesie, and since we've been talking about surfaces already, let's go on there and have a look what the material zones are. There's just one. That's actually quite convenient. It's called Fabric 1 Front 2590. So that's perfect. We only really need one. But sometimes if you make a really complex garment with a lot of uh, different patterns, then Marvelous Designer creates a different material zone for every one of them. So sometimes it's a simplish garment with 20 material zones and they're not useful for the end user. A, they're not named something that is, is in any way descriptive, like fabric one front 2590 is not, not something that anyone will, will understand what that actually means because Marvelous Designer just gave that um, just, just kind of random name that it gives it. But sometimes it will do something if you had a, if you had a, a waistband, for example, and you had the front of a waistband that might become one material and then the back of the waistband might also be a material. For the end user, you probably want to combine them and say, one thing that's waistband or you have something like the the trim of a dress or you have something like the the collar of a dress or something so you can go ahead with this 
uh, principle and literally set those things up, get rid of some and add others if you like. So I'm going to do this on on here now. We only have one. I only really want to rename that, but of course rename option doesn't exist. So what a shame. What we need to do, head over to our mid, um, go on, hover, the geometry editor tool. You can do that either with this little icon here or you head over to tools, geometry editor. And then you have to open the tool options tab. If you don't see that, head over to window panes, tool settings. That's the one. And then in it, we're going to focus on the surfaces here. So we have one and it has all the faces. So that's cool. But if we wanted one that is named differently, we can't, sadly, there's no rename option. I can only re remove everything from that group or I can go and uh, literally click the plus sign, which now selects everything on the on the garment, which is kind of for Marvelous Designer and baked maps is, is perfect. Um, or you can go and right click and head over to selection Geometry selection, there we go, and say select all. That'll also work. That'll just select everything. And now with everything selected, you left click on the surfaces tab, on the surfaces like you know thing here. Then you right click and create surface from selected. And I'm gonna call mine onesie material. And what it'll do is it'll create a new thing with all the faces in and it'll remove all those from the previous one, which is, you know, the one that is nondescript. And that now we can go and remove, leaving us with a single material. It's kind of cool. But you can literally go to town with it. If you wanted to, if you wanted to separate those out, you can go literally in and keep selecting what you like, usually with the, with the wire selected here and if if there would be any any detail you would can go and uh, select that and with it selected imagine this is my material group and you would go again once onto the surfaces tab you left click and create a new surface from selected and give that a name like you know say this is a collar or something and then you can just separate them out you can still give them the same name get the, the same maps that's what we're going to do in a moment but it's just one of those things that uh, if you wanted to give the user an option to give a different color different rim kind of color retrospectively you can do that just thought i'd mention it that that option is there in Das Studio. It's kind of, you know, always interesting to see how powerful Das Studio actually is. Very cool. But back to the maps. We've got one material zone, which is now funky. It's called 1Z material. And if I head over to my actual surfaces tab, I can see that here. And it's, it's just, it's just more descriptive that way. So if you wanted to share your Marvelous Designer creations wrapped up as a Das Studio product, I would strongly recommend you do that, either in Das Studio or in, in something else. But currently, it's just gray. So it's not something that we want to... Uh, it's just not the, not the purple that we see here in Marvelous Designer. So let's go and bake those maps out. And we do that with the UV editor as well. I don't know if there is actually a texture on here. It might just be a flat color. I don't know. I'll just show you the principle. You click on, I think this icon here. Is that it? Baked textures. Yeah, that's the one. And in it, you can set the size. So 8,000 might be a little bit overkill. Let's go and 4,000 is a good size. 2048 is also a good size. It'll be a square. So I'll, I'll choose 2048. Pick the first option here, 0 to 1, which is the default. And then it'll give you an option to pick the types of maps you want to export. So it's it's literally, um, I don't think we have all of these. I'm just going to, I'm just going to use them minus the opacity. I don't have anything that's opaque here. So I'll go and, and just go and save those out. And then Miles Designer will now go and bake out these four maps here. Okay, please enter a correct path. Yeah, Marvelous Designer is perfectly correct. I should really tell it where to save those maps. Dang. Let's go and make ourselves a new folder. Call that maps. And I'll call those 1C maps. And then I hit save and Marvelous Designer is going to town, baking them all out. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Dream Lab. Welcome, by the way. Welcome. Good to see you. Yeah, I don't know why it's so complicated. Why can't you just rename a material zone? I think that's a Dash Studio limitation, though, because in Blender you can do that. So this must be must be Dash Studio limitation. So with 1Z here, let's go and have a look under Base, Diffuse. And the base color is going to be is Project Darja Maps. That's going to be the diffuse here. That's the first map. That's almost going to sort out kind of most of it. The diffuse roughness is still set to zero. That means it's not rough at all. I suppose diffuse roughness that can get that can take the roughness map actually is that what you do and then you put the roughness to one i think and as we can see nothing's actually happened i think it's not the diffuse roughness at all excuse me it's not that it's the glossy roughness isn't it i think <laughs> under glossy there's glossy color as well we don't really need that but glossy roughness that's the one that's where the roughness map goes and that should take away our shine if we set it to one does it yeah there we go it does it does so no more shine that's cool we have a metallicity map as well oh actually first bump map but we don't actually have a bump map we have a normal map once the normal map if it had a texture of a fabric on it it would create these little bumps and then we have the metalness map where is that again metallic flakes that's the one i think is that it yes metallic flakes weight i think i think that's the metal in this map we don't really have any metal pieces in here but i think that needs to have a map then you set that to one and then anything that uh, would be metal would be would be treated as metal by the render engine i think i think that's where that was was it if it if it isn't you know, please let me know You know, yes, um, Callie, uh, what a shame, you're, you're gone. <laughs> I will tell you anyway. I'll, I'll tell you again when you're back. Maybe you're still listening, who knows? Yes, that is confusing because there's so many types of selection sets that you have to make. And um, they, they, what they told you, they don't actually mean material zones. They mean face groups uh, or facial face zones or poly groups. It's not the material zones. They're two different things. So you set them up independently from another. So yes, um, it, I'll, I'll, I'll hope I'll let you I'll let you know that as you get back. <laughs> yes, that is correct, Dreamlab. I do, I do indeed, because I was I'm still on the geometry selection tool. Let's quickly go back from that selection gone. Well spotted. Oh, there's also there's one other thing. I'm glad this has happened. You see these strips on her body now. They're actually, the Marvelous Design is trying to be clever. We don't, we don't really want to see those. This is basically where the patterns come together. So <laughs> that's exactly right. Yes, seamless. There is a setting that I forgot to change and we can, hopefully we can do that retrospectively. But when we bake out the maps, I think this is where that happens. When we bake the textures, Dorel told me this recently. Did she say it was here somewhere? Fill texture seams with zero pixels. Didn't I do that? Dang. Darrell told me that. Darrell knows what that's all about. And she did send me a screenshot. I forgot where that was now. That wasn't on Discord. There is a way to get rid of that. And I thought zero would be the way to go, but I guess it isn't. There's two ways. One is how to, how to make it show up in the viewport. And that was, of course, here under simulation, I think, with these things selected. Man, where was that? It was just a number you type in. And of course, Jay's completely forgotten where that was. Bond Sky simulation, it wasn't that. Seam taping, curved geometry, no, it wasn't. Man, where was that now? I forgot. There were two two options to change it. One was actually on the garment, and then the other one 
Was that maybe on the, or it could be on the sewing itself. Could that be? But if I go and select the edit sewing tool, is that it? Edit sewing, yes. Whoa, that looks interesting. That looks like a blur effect, doesn't it? Interesting, very interesting. Seam line there, intensity and thickness. I think that was it. Thickness, if we put that to zero, but that's only for the viewport here and for uh, for marvelous designer it is not then doing that for the for the maps on export that was a different setting yeah so that's just the viewport and now we don't see the seam lines at all anymore a little bit of a different shading here and a hole underneath the arm but wasn't this Wasn't this here somewhere? That wasn't it. Pretty sure it's when you export these things. Fill texture seams. I don't know. Do we have to fill them out? I can't remember now. Let's go and try it out. Let's try and fill them out with literally 10... With 10 pixels. And just go and try this with... Uh, 1C maps V2. See if that's if that's any better. What could possibly go wrong? So um, on base, let's go bring in a new map. 1C V2. It's still kind of there. We should have already seen it change. I don't know how to change that. Durrell knows that. As soon as I do know, I was gonna make, I was gonna write an article about this and I totally forgot one of those things. But yeah, there is a setting that's just as a map thing. When you change that, it'll be all good. Let's see if putting the other maps on is, uh, if that's gonna do something nice. Where's the other map? Where's the glossy roughness map? Duh, wasn't under glossy. Am I losing it? Where was that? Metallicity is here. Which I don't think we need. Then the bump map or normal map is uh, here. I think. There we go. Where was it now? Glossy, glossy roughness it's called. I'm sure I've given it a name. Glossy Roughness, there it is. <laughs> glossy Roughness. Does it work? Yes, actually it has worked. So that was the setting then. That was the setting. How exciting. <laughs> what can possibly go wrong? Yes. This, <laughs> what, what did my friend recently say? God's left hook is strong, as he says. <laughs> oh yes. So hey, problem solved. We've, we've managed to make it happen. So I suppose what we did have, what we what we created there was just a larger seam between the patterns, so the the maps would bleed out a little bit, and hence maybe filling things in. I don't know, but that's what we needed. Now we don't see strips anymore on the on the on the onesie suit. And more to the point, and you know, quad erat demonstrandum, we can create a pose and the clothing now follows which is super exciting that's exactly what Daja wanted i hope that makes it clear Daja. if not do let me know nice outfit let's see how you can fix that hole underneath the arm i really don't know where uh, what that is i can i can only assume something isn't sewn but i'll let you i'll let you sort that out there we go 